In the previous two lectures, we discussed Lenz's Law. Now, Lenz's Law basically allows us to determine the direction of our induced electric current that is produced as a result of a changing magnetic flux. So, in this lecture, we're going to look at the following three cases in which we're going to apply Lenz's Law to determine the direction of our induced electric current. So, let's begin with case number one. In case number one, we essentially have the following region of space in which we have a uniform external magnetic field B that points out of the board, which is symbolized by these blue dots. So inside this magnetic field, we have a circular loop of wire. And let's suppose that it has the following area. And let's suppose we begin pulling it in all possible directions so that our area begins to increase. Now, as the loop increases in size, the area of the loop increases, and that implies that the magnetic flux will also increase. So the magnetic flux for a uniform external magnetic field B is given by the following equation. The magnetic flux is equal to the product of the magnetic field B, our area A, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between these two vectors. Now, because our area increases in size in this uh, case, our magnetic field will also increase. Now, we apply Lenz's Law. Lenz's Law tells us that if our magnetic flux is increasing, that means our induced magnetic magnetic field produced by the induced electric current will oppose the direction of our external magnetic field. Our external magnetic field points outward and that means our induced magnetic field will point into the board. So once again, by Lenz's law, the direction of the induced magnetic field will oppose the direction of the external magnetic field that implies it points into the board. Now, we apply right-hand rule number one. And right-hand rule number one tells us that the induced electric current in the wire will point in the clockwise direction. So along the following direction. So, we take our right hand and we essentially curl our fingers in the same direction as our induced magnetic field, which is into the board. So, we wrap our hand around the wire and curl the fingers into the board, extend the thumb, and the thumb points in the, clock, <clears throat> in the clockwise direction. So, around the following circular loop. Now, let's move on to case number two. Let's suppose, once again, we have the following region of space that contains a uniform magnetic field given by B, which is coming out of the board as shown by the following blue dots. Now, instead of expanding and increasing our area, we're taking our loop and we're essentially twisting it in the counterclockwise direction as shown in the following diagram. So initially, before we twisted, our area vector and our magnetic field, our external magnetic field, point in the same direction. That is, they point out of the board and the angle between these two vectors will be zero. Now, as we twist our loop in a counterclockwise direction, we are increasing our angle between the area vector A and the magnetic field vector B. So our angle initially is zero. When we twist it, the angle begins to increase. Now, when our angle increases, notice cosine of an increasing angle will give us a smaller value. And that implies that this will decrease our magnetic flux. So as the cosine of an increasing angle decreases, that means this quantity will also decrease. And that's exactly why our magnetic flux will decrease. 
So, now we're ready to apply Lenz's law. Lenz's law tells us that the induced magnetic field B will point in the same direction as our external magnetic field and that's because we have a decreasing magnetic flux. So, once again, by using right hand rule number one, we essentially take our right hand and now we wrap our hand around our wire so that our fingers curl in the same direction as uh, the induced magnetic field, which points out of the board in the same direction as the external magnetic field. So we twist it this way, we extend the thumb, and in this case, the thumb points in the following counterclockwise direction. So our induced current points counterclockwise. And finally, let's move on to case number three. So. Now, once again, we have the same exact loop of wire, but now our external magnetic field points to the right along our x-axis as shown. Now, notice initially the angle between the area vector and our magnetic field is at a 90 degree angle. And that means that because cosine of 90 is zero initially, our magnetic flux is zero. Now, as we move our wire to the right in the same direction as our magnetic field B, the angle between the area vector A and the magnetic field B remains the same. It remains at 90 degrees. And because cosine of 90 is zero, and cosine of 90 of zero means our magnetic flux is zero, that means our magnetic flux is not changing. And because our magnetic flux is not changing, that implies that there is no induced EMF, and so there is no induced electric current inside our loop of wire. So in the first case, our electric current that is induced by our change in magnetic flux points in the clockwise direction. In case two, it points in the counterclockwise direction. And in case three, there is no induced electric current because there is no change in flux. Remember, only a change in flux will induce an electric current inside our closed loop of wire.